Okay. Just let me know when it's recording, Charlie. It's recording. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for turning up and uh, joining us on our seventh study group um, in August. And this month, uh, thank you to everybody for voting for the Mobile Solutions Architecture Designer exam. This is the first study group that we have done on this particular topic. So we're just going to take a deep dive into customer mobile strategy. So thank you very much to Charlie for taking this on. Um, this is Charlie. If you don't know her already, Charlie is um, a co-leader of Ladies Be Architects, and she is she is working really hard towards her CTA review board at the moment. Um, this is quite a quite an interesting topic for Charlie as well. So she's very pleased to be um, presenting this to you today. So thank you very much, Charlie. Um, before we start with Charlie, I'm just going to go through our August champions. Um, for this month and we've got a few that we want to just shout out and say thank you to for everything that they've been doing. Um, first of all, we've got two very special champions this month. One of them is Natalia Murphy. Natalia approached us not long ago to ask about running a study group for the integration architecture examination and she gave up about six or seven weeks um, of her time or six or not yeah six and seven weeks of her time to uh, take some of our colleagues and lady, fellow ladies through the integration exam so we wanted to say thank you very much to Natalia um, she actually inspired one of our other ladies Blanca Leon Carter to start her own journey to PD1 uh, platform developer one study group as well so we just wanted to give her a special shout out um, we also want to take a moment just to recognize Lynette Lim from the UK. Lynette has been running our first cohort of CTA mock review boards for candidates that are interested in, in ramping up for the review board. So she's been running every Saturday night, actually. Um, she's been giving up a couple of hours of her time to um, take three or four candidates through some mock scenarios and record them and put them or post them online. Um, her efforts have given the community some recorded attempts to use as a reference point, and we never had that before. So a special thank you to Lynette for giving up her time for that. Um, our, moving on to our certification champions. So we have Catherine Scannell. Catherine has just achieved her certified administrator, but she made a very, a very special point around this being the first step on her CTA journey. And we wanted to recognize that because the first... I would say the first step in any journey is probably the hardest. It's convincing yourself to um, start working towards something and knowing it's a long road ahead. So um, it takes a bit of courage to do that. So we wanted to specifically shout out Catherine for her achievement on her first step to CTA. Uh, secondly, Christine Marshall, she has achieved her platform app builder in July. So clap, clap, clap. Uh, we also have Crystal. I believe Crystal's on the, on the call as well, actually. Um, Crystal has achieved in July her data architecture and management designer, so congratulations to Crystal. On the integration side, we have three champions. We have Swati, and we have our first man, who um, was very specific, uh, specifically called out Ladies Be Architects for the support that we've given him through the integration exam. So we, we felt we should uh, include him too. So well done to Sandesh and Swati. And then earlier today, actually, within an hour, uh, Michelle Regal, um, or Regal, however you pronounce, sorry, Michelle, um, she very recently announced on Twitter today that she has passed the integration architecture certification as well. So congratulations to Michelle. On the sharing and visibility front, we have Nupur Sharma. She's actually a colleague of my husband's at Make Positive. Um, congratulations to Nupur for passing sharing and visibility. And then we've got two very special shout outs here as well. So Carrie got PD1 this month and also became an application architect, which is huge success and a great achievement so congratulations Carrie and then Martin Martin is one of our allies he talks to us a lot on Twitter and asks questions is quite engaged and helps us a lot in the community so we felt that it would only be right to recognize that he also achieved identity and access management designer in July which made him a system architect so congratulations to everybody um, if you would 
be willing we would like to collect your postal address because we'd like to send something in the post to all of our champions um so do give me an an email just uh sorry do get in contact with me after the call just to let me know what your address is and we'll get something sent out Gemma, yep. i was thinking for the august champions that will be at dreamforce mm -hmm. uh, we would like to give you your champion prize in person at one of the ladies be architect sessions so awesome. let us know if you're there and um, we'll, we won't post it, we'll give it to you in person. Fantastic. Um, just while I'm on the subject as well, we have our top trailblazers competition running at the moment, and this is our Road to Dreamforce. Um, so we have, basically, you need to just be in the top three um, in t on the leaderboard in terms of badges that you've collected between now and the, the first night of Dreamforce. Um, this is the current situation with that. So Olivia's at the top with 68. Jeanette is second with 63. And Laura is third at, with 52. And I know it's been getting very tight. Um, <clears throat> but it's an opportunity for you to win some uh, Ladies Be Architects swag. If you want to join, um, don't worry. The clock is still ticking. Um, any achieve any trailhead badges you achieved from the 30, since the 13th of August will automatically be included as well. So all you need to do if you're not in this list and you want to be in the competition is make sure that you're a member of our community group on the success community and then uh, send me your trailhead you, uh, vanity URL and I'll add you to the leaderboard. And anything that you've earned between the 13th of August up till now will be automatically included for you. So I can see Olivia is actually on trailhead right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think um, without further ado, I shall pass back to Charlie. Thank you very much. There is one more slide that you were supposed to do, but it's okay, I'll do it. Thank you, what would I do without you? <laughs> okay, let me share my screen, press the button. Uh, wrong one. So present. Mm -hmm. Can everybody see? Did I yes. press the right button? Okay, good. So we are going to be at Dreamforce and we are so excited. We're looking forward to it and we can't wait anymore. We're coordinating wardrobes and wine and parties. And of course, the things that are important are the sessions. So um, it's all listed on our website and we'll keep it up to date. Things are changing around a lot. Um, but if you want to come meet up with us and have a beer with us or karaoke with us or just come and meet us and spend some time, um, we'll be around the campus um, at various times. So on Monday, we'll, um, we'll join the WIT devs. Um, that was the Women Who Dev user group previously. And we'll also have um, a booth at the WID Day. I think we're a co-sponsor there. And then we're going to go karaoke. I'm not so sure about me karaoke, but we'll definitely be there karaoke. Uh, on Tuesday, Susanna and myself will be at the Lightning Champions Breakfast. Gemma is going to have lots of stuff with her, um, especially from Blue Wolf, but also some Ladies Be Architect swag. And then she has a session at 12 with Blue Wolf, um, Empower Her Speed Mentoring. We have our admins can become architects two session at 1.30. And then we have one of our main sessions, the beers with Ladies Be Architect at 6 p.m., which you really do not want to miss. We're not actually going to drink beer. We're going to do hands-on scenarios um, live in the, in the room together. So I think it's going to be amazing. On Wednesday, we have our second main session, which is going to be the ultimate hiking guide. Um, on how to hike Mount CTA. We promise you, you are gonna laugh till the tears stream down. It's gonna be amazing. We are privileged to have six CTAs um, who's going to join us in this session to tell you all about how to hike this mountain. On Thursday, we're gonna eat some more at the App Exchange breakfast. And I got those two, I got beers. That's okay. That's okay. Be beers is is because our original session was build an amazing enterprise rockstar solution. We wanted it to spell out beers as an acronym, but um, the true. powers that be decided to sanitize things somewhat. So um, the six p.m. on Tuesday is actually happy hour with Ladies Be Architects, and then this is our right. solution workshop. Okay, thank you for that one. I didn't realize they changed our wording. We thought we were very clever with that. But okay, so our scenario building session is going to be on Thursday at eleven. 
and we're gonna have actual beers on 6 p.m. on Tuesday. <laughs> and then Susanna and I um, am privileged enough to be um, invited to speak on a panel with Salesforce um, to talk about our careers and the best thing we built on Salesforce. So um, please come and join us. Um, we would love to meet all of you. Uh, that, that's the reason why we are a Dreamforce. So keep an eye on the website and come see where we are. Okay, so let's talk about mobile. Now, when I started studying for mobile designer, everybody told me that it's very easy and it's optional on the triangle. So I thought, you know what, I'm not gonna study. I'm just gonna go write the exam and I'm sure I'll pass because everybody's telling me it's so easy and I failed. And I got a big fright and I sat down and I thought, okay, let me do it again. And I actually studied, but only about two hours. I read through all the documentation and I thought, yeah, I get this. I understand the concept and I failed again. And then I got angry and I thought, oh, I'm not gonna do it, it's optional. There's no way I'm gonna do this. I'm not gonna make my life difficult. But then it started niggling at me and I started hearing about the mobile um, portions of it in the CTA exam and that it's really, really important for you to be able to do this properly. And obviously I won't be able to because I still don't pass the exam. So I thought, let me do this. And I sat down and I studied for about two weeks. And I was really meticulous in how I studied and what I studied. And a couple of light bulbs went on. And I started finally to really understand what it's all about. It's not just about which technology you're using or which platform. There's a lot of nuances. And it is such a core part of your Salesforce because it's dependent on your security that you've already implemented, on the customizations you've already implemented. Um, so I took the time and then Gemma and I wrote the exam on the same day and I'm happy to say we both passed. So today I wanna to talk to you about the mobile customer strategy. And if you, go, if you go Google it, there's quite a bit of documentation out there, but also not really, because it just talks about, sorry, there's a mosquito who's gonna bite me. Um, and the blogs and the documentation talks about the platform and the architecture and deployment and testing and offline, but it doesn't really talk about strategy. But if you go and look at it from our point of view, we are architects, we get to sit at the client and they ask us questions, then it is really important to understand um, how this all fits into a strategy. So I wanna take you through a bit of a scenario. I think some of you will recognize this. We have a client and they're all suited and tied and very formal and we have a meeting with them and they give us these requirements. They want a mobile solution, they want it now, it needs to be fast. They don't have in-house developers, they have an aggressive rollout plan, it's mobile, Salesforce is an app, how hard can it be? <coughs> oh, but did we tell you we only allowed Android devices or only iPhones? Um, oh, of course we need offline access, it needs to be secure, it needs to be pretty, it needs to be fast, it needs to be easy. We get all these requirements thrown at us as an architect, that's us, slash superhero, of course. And we have to make sense of what the client's requirements are and come up with a mobile solution. And that is the strategy. You need to be able to listen to all these requirements. You need to know what your next steps are instead of what I usually do is go help, but now you don't have to because the ladies be architects are near. So what we've done is we thought about all the possible questions that your client could ask you or the requirements that they can throw at you. And we've come up with a bit of a checklist of questions and information that you need to have in your toolkit so that when you have these conversations, you can drive the requirement gathering, the discovery. Um, you'll be able to ask the right questions to get to the right answers so that you can design the right mobile approach. And of course, this is very, very valid when you're doing your CTA um, exam because each one of those exams have a mobile component. Uh, I sometimes feel it shouldn't be a, a, a optional certification on the triangle because it's such a big part of the, not just the CTA exam, but also of pretty much every implementation we do as architects. So don't fear, we have a checklist for you. And these are the four magic questions that you need to keep ready in your head 
um, or have them in your notepad or wherever you keep your magic questions. And when you start talking mobile to your client or when you start thinking about mobile for your scenarios, you have to remember these four things. So let me pause there for a second. Any questions so far? No? Okay, good. So the first question you need to ask is, are we going to go Salesforce or custom? Are we going to use the Salesforce mobile app or the custom app? So just for those of you that don't know yet, it's no longer branded Salesforce One. It's now just called Salesforce. And that in itself is quite confusing. But um, especially if you start reading technical documentation, it says Salesforce sends this to Salesforce. And you're thinking, which one's Salesforce One? Which one's the mobile app? But I digress. So the first question is, are we going to go with a Salesforce app solution or are we going with the custom mobile app solution? And there's not always a clear answer. You have to think of quite a lot of things before you can get to this answer. But this is your most important question. Your second question is, if we are going to go custom, are we going to go HTML5? Are we going to go native? Or are we going to have a hybrid solution? And again, there's a couple of hundred questions that you need to ask to answer this question because it depends on so many factors. It depends on developers. Does the client have in-house developers? Do they have the money to build this if they don't have it in-house? Do they have the time? Do they have creative departments? Um, how will the integrations look? What are we doing about security? But I'm jumping ahead. So our second question is, once we've um, decided Salesforce or Custom, we need to decide which platform we're going to use. Then the question is security. Does the company have security policies? Do they allow bring your own device? Um, how do they maintain and administer all of their enterprise mobile apps? Do they have those structures in place? How will they distribute it? Do they have in-house distribution apps? Do they use the public app stores? So there's a lot of questions around security. But the third main theme question is all about security. And then the fourth question, which seems like a silly question, but we kind of forget about this, is how will, you, how will we test this? And if you've done your due diligence and you've worked with the client to get the answers to these four main questions, you will have a really strong mobile strategy, customer mobile strategy, that you can document nicely and present to them, and they would have a solid plan on how to proceed from here. So those are the four magic questions. Now, let's look at the first question. Should we go Salesforce or should we go custom? So here, it's really important for you as an architect to understand what does Salesforce app do? Um, what are the benefits? What are the cons? And the same for a custom app. On a high level, on a Salesforce app, it has a defined user interface. It looks like the Salesforce app, right? On a custom app, you can make it look like whatever you want to. You don't have to have the menu on the left-hand side. You don't have to follow the trail of the, the pages and the related lists and the tabs. On the Salesforce app, you have access to all the data in Salesforce automatically. On a custom app, you have to query the data. Depending on the platform you choose, you're either going to use REST APIs or Visual Force, jQuery and mobile, jQuery mobile and Ajax, or JavaScript promoting. So you've got to keep that in mind. Now, um, as we mentioned time earlier, it, with the Salesforce app, you automatically get access to the data. There's no time implication. But to go and develop those um, data integrations, that's got a huge time implication. The Salesforce app gives you an integrated experience. In other words, everything that's already in your Salesforce main org or your desktop will automatically come over into the mobile. And you've got complete integrated control on what you want to have in the mobile app. Um, on the custom app, you would have, uh, you can brand the interface for customer facing exposure. We know how important it is for your customer facing apps to be completely um, user friendly and have a solid UX component to it. It's got to be the easier, the better. And in Salesforce, it's not always the case. So it's not a recommended approach to roll out a customer facing app on the Salesforce app. In Salesforce, if you want extra functionality, you can roll it out using um, publisher actions, which are very, very powerful to create new um, actions and processes inside your mobile. Um, 
You can customize the Salesforce app using point and click or programmatic customizations, just like you would do Salesforce. In your custom app, you need to be able to code it in that platform language. So if it's an iOS app, you're going to have to code it in Swift or one of the iOS languages. Android, Droid the same. HTML5, you need to have those skills. So it's a little bit more complex to build a custom app in that regard. On Salesforce app, you can add Visual Force pages, Lightning components, and Canvas apps. And the Salesforce app has defined navigation points. Also, the Salesforce app is included in all Salesforce editions and supported by Salesforce. In the custom app, however, you get the ability to configure and control complex offline behavior, which you don't have in the Salesforce app. The Salesforce app has a basic offline functionality um, with limited caching, whereas if you use the mobile SDK on a custom app, you get um, really robust, really complex offline capability that you can um, customize or build the way your company needs it to have. The custom app is, was there a question? There is a question from Aldo. Um, that's around how do you, what's the recommended approach for external users? If you've got it, um, if you need to expose your data to, expen to external users. Again, you have to think of all the other factors, but um, if your external users have community licenses, you can use the Salesforce app. If you want to um, do your identity and access management through a third party application, you could facilitate um, a custom application. You can build a custom mobile app and do the user authentication through a, a single sign on or OAuth into a third party IAM or even use something like Heroku. So there's no clear cut answer. Um, what are the risks, Charlie? Um, if you decide to let external users to uh, use your your Salesforce One app, um, are there any risks associated for the customer? There's always a risk when you allow any user, whether it's an external or internal user. Um, there's a risk of allowing them access to your app. Why? Because your data is in the app, your functionality, and a lot of it is proprietary to your to your company. So you would need to be able to ensure that the correct security is in place so that the users only have access to what they are supposed to have access, that you are compliant um, to country and state and federal laws um, with exposing data to users or external users. Um, you also have to make sure that they can't steal your data. Um, so security and access to data should be your biggest risks when you allow users access to your Salesforce, whether it's on a mobile or on a desktop. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Sure. The other thing about a custom app is it's not officially supported by Salesforce. So if I go and build a custom iOS app um, on Swift and I use Xcode to code it and I deploy it to the, ICE, the Apple um, store, Salesforce is not going to support my app, but these apps are supported through the code communities. There's a lot of information out there and a lot of people willing to help, but it's not officially supported by Salesforce. The other good thing about a custom app is you can really go deep on security. You can create custom security, whereas in Salesforce you would use, on the Salesforce app, you would use the security tools that Salesforce allows us. Um, and I guess the biggest drawback of a custom app, the dev costs are high. I saw some number, and I didn't want to put it on the slide because I don't know how old the number is, but it said anything from 50000 to $5 million for a custom app. And I suppose the other thing to add as well is um, if you decide to build a custom app and you decide to go native, um, you need to think about which platform you're going to, to develop on. And it's very, I've been in pre-sales meetings where somebody has said, we want to build on every platform, you know, Android and iPhone and, and iOS, they're the two common ones. And we said, do you, you do realize that you're going to need two different dev teams, each yeah. with their own sets of skills and those skills cost uh, slightly different, they're costed slightly differently. Um, and that's when you start trying to, that's when you start examining the trade-offs between native versus web versus hybrid. Absolutely. Um, native is very, very expensive. iPhone and or iOS and Android developers are scarce and very expensive. 
So as Gemma said, it's absolutely, you have to weigh up the pros and cons. So as you can see, there is a lot of, I don't know how to switch off these messages. There's a lot of um, things you need to think of when you make this decision about Salesforce, um, whether you're gonna use the Salesforce app or the custom app. And we didn't have enough hours in this 45 minutes to go through each one of these in details, but I wanted to give you the idea of the high level comparison between the two types. But now you can see the amount of questions you need to ask. You need to go and find out what are their requirements and go deeper and say, if we have an existing Salesforce, for example, do we have lightning components? Do we want those lightning components in the mobile app? If yes, you can put a tick box on the side of the page. Um, if they want robust offline um, capabilities, you put a tick box on this side. And you as an architect need to be able to do step by step, go through all of these and make your tick boxes and then be able to present back and say, these are the trade-offs between the two and ultimately it becomes a business decision. That was just the first question, Salesforce or custom? So if we decided that we wanna go custom, we now have to decide on a platform and Gemma alluded to that. So we have choices. We can do HTML5, we can do native um, or hybrid. What does native mean? Native means it is an app built in the platform language. So it'll be an iOS app built in the iOS language that works natively on the iPhone. Um, same with Android, same with Windows. Um, so you would have those specific native platform developers coding in those specific native platform development tools in order to build a native app. What is a hybrid solution? Well, let me, let me first talk about what's an HTML5. It's a website. It's basically coding in web technologies using JavaScript, CSS, and HTML5 to create a mobile experience. So you can open on your phone or on your iPad, open your browser, open Chrome, open Safari, open Firefox, whatever browser you have on your phone, and navigate to a URL, which will then open up a mobile experience. So that's a little bit easier because you don't have to have these specialized developers. Um, most developers today can code CSS, HTML5, or JavaScript. There are so many libraries out there that you can use that makes it a lot easier. Um, so that's HTML5. And then you have a hybrid. And what is hybrid? Hybrid is when you use a combination of native and HTML5, where you would for example, have a native app and you would click on a link and it will open up, it'll, um, you, we've all seen it in all the apps we use, it'll actually break you out into a browser, open your browser and display a new page there. Um, so these are the options that you have. You as an architect need to understand each one of them um, in depth. The only time I really started to understand them is when I built them. I went into Trailhead, and Trailhead has the most fantastic Trailheads for each one of these platforms. And I went through them step by step. I downloaded the right software for each one of the platforms. Um, and I went and I followed the Trailhead examples and I built a iOS app, I built an Android app, and I built a Windows app. And that was the first time I really understood the complexity and the nitty gritty information behind them. And you as an architect need to know this. So my recommendation is go build it. Find some time, go sit down and go and build it. Even if you just build a one screen page, because then you get a really good idea of what is involved. Um, and then you don't have to just memorize these bullets, you can remember them all. All right, so now the third question, and I don't know where my tick mark's gone, but it's supposed to be here on the left-hand side. We talk about security policies. You have to find out exactly what the customer requirements are. In today's age, people are more and more um, security conscious. So you have to think about, I'm so sorry about these text messages. Um, you have to talk about, author, you have to think about authorizations and permissions. Now think back a bit the difference between authorization and authentication. Authorization is you giving permission. So um, for you to access a service, and authentication is saying, yes, I authenticate who you are. I can see you are Charlie and these right messages I can't encrypt. I did. It doesn't want to stop. <laughs> look, look, it's quit. It's done. I don't know. It drives me nuts. That's okay. I'm sorry, everyone, but you can read my texts. It's fine. <laughs> 
there shouldn't be anything naughty on there. It's got like dermatology and <laughs> oh, stuff. That's a shame. All right, no, never mind. So when you think about security, you've got to think about authorizations and permissions. Who's going to be able to access it? Um, internal users, external users. Um, from your users, what can they access? So it's the same considerations as an architect as when you're doing um, a, a normal Salesforce implementation is who can see what and who can do what with what they can see. So that's important to understand. Then you have to think about storage, storage security. If data is going to be downloaded onto the device, how are we storing it securely? Um, a lot of companies allow employees to have their own devices. So now you've got company information on a personal device. That opens up a whole world of nonsense on so many levels. So you've got to think about offline data. How is it going to, how do you keep it secure? Um, that's when you come into thinking about your mobile device management strategy. Um, are you going to allow them to have your their own devices? If so, how are you going to manage the enterprise apps on those devices? So it's not just Salesforce. You have to hear talk to the company um, security team. Uh, it's no longer just a Salesforce issue, but it's now an enterprise-wide consideration when you do this part of the architecture. And then you are, the last thing that you need to think about is the connected app security attributes. Now, those are kind of easy because once you connect um, either a native or a hybrid or the Salesforce app to your org, it will automatically create a connected app in Salesforce, and um, as you guys know from other study sessions, a connected app has different policies. So um, timeout and logout policies, and whether it's connecting through OAuth2, and who's got access, and profile permissions. It's a lot of attributes that you can set up on a connected app. So security, I think, is not the most important thing you need to think about, but it's a really core component. To me, the first question is still the most important. Which one? And that's the hardest one. But that's security. Any questions on security? Um, not a question so much, but a comment. One of the things that I remember seeing was um, being asked to actually identify, based upon a security requirement, what kind of app should be recommended. Um, <clears throat> so, for custom, so the, one of the pit, the trade offs of a of a web app is that you have to log in every single time you want yes. to use it. So. We've all got those apps that we've that we've used every now and again, and it always forgets our password. They're they're typically web apps, um, so you you might come across some kind of um, insinuation in the exam questions around that, uh, around how many times does the user need to be does the user need to be able to log in, and does does the user need to be able to just open it up and not have to log in every time? So it's just something to watch out for. Yeah, absolutely. And the exam, the thing I think why I failed the first time is it, it felt weird to me because pretty much every question in the exam is to this point. It says, if your customer has this requirement, which solution would you recommend? And to me as an architect, I could, I could argue all the ways because I felt I didn't have enough information. I needed more information to make a real decision. But um, if we do this, we could go hybrid. If we do that, we can do Salesforce app. If we do that, um, but there are very, very clear best practices on which one to choose based on specific requirements, based on security requirements. Um, if your company has a requirement that data should be able to be stored offline for extended period of times and only Delta should be able to sync back, which one do you do? Definitely not Salesforce app. Um, you would use the mobile SDK. In order to use the mobile SDK, you can't use HTML5. So it needs to be either a native or a hybrid app. So it's very much a thought process of understanding each one of these questions, as I call them, um, and knowing that if you have a combination of them, which one do they point? In which block does your checkbox end up being in? All right, and then what about testing? And people always forget about mobile testing. So I did some digging and I found that Salesforce does a whole lot of testing upfront on the mobile apps. They do UI automation regression, unit level testing, manual regression performance, security, accessibility, server side upgrades, instant refreshes, org migrations, localizations, and more. There's a whole list of what Salesforce does for the Salesforce apps um, every time something changes. So 
when my when my clients ask me charlie what do we need to test when it comes to our mobile I present this to them and I say, Salesforce already tested this. That doesn't mean we do not have to test Salesforce. We have to test the Salesforce mobile app if we're using a mobile app, but we have to make sure we test advanced authentication, that we test an MDM, de the MDM deployment if we, are, um, if we do have one. Um, scenario specific to our security policy, any custom Visual Force Canvas or Flexi pages, any custom connected app settings, any integrations with non-Salesforce systems or apps, and custom network restrictions. Those are above and beyond your user stories. If you have a user story that says a user should be able to log a lead, you need to go test that in your desktop and in your mobile. And when you test it in mobile, you need to test it using an emulator, but also in every device type that you're planning to roll out to. If you're planning to roll out Salesforce app to um, iPhones and Androids and iPads and whatever permutations of devices, you need to have a team that tested on each one of those devices. It is not enough. Salesforce says very, very clearly that it's not enough to test your functionality on emulators. Um, it's good for kind of demos or high level testing, but you have to perform your testing on the actual devices. And that's really important. So if you have a custom app and not a Salesforce app, you need to test everything in both these blocks because um, you are custom coding them. You are coding the performance, the security, the accessibility in Xcode or in Android's Go Go store servers, whatever we call them. Um, but if it's a Salesforce app, then make sure you test everything um, or recommend a testing strategy where everything on the right hand side is tested based on your implementation. Oh, there's my tick mark. All right, so when you look at the exam guide, one of the main considerations for a mobile um, architecture designer exam is, can you describe the key elements of a customer mobile strategy? If you think about your four questions, mobile architecture, mobile platform, mobile security, and mobile testing, you have those answers. You can describe it. If you're in your CTA, board exam and it says a customer mobile strategy needs to be designed for this customer, you will be able to figure it out because you know what questions to ask. And you know which considerations goes into each one of those questions. Should it be Salesforce or custom? If it is custom, should it be HTML5, native or a hybrid? What does the security look like and how will we test it? Those are the four core components of creating a successful customer mobile strategy. Questions? No questions? Everybody still awake? Where's everyone? Yeah. <laughs> so as a study group, we didn't go deep into any. <laughs> I wanted to repeat everything. Nice try, Pete. <laughs> All right, let me just grab something to drink. Let's go again. Um, <laughs> now, so it, it's important, the strategy, but what you need to know to devise your strategy sits in all the other parts of the mobile exam. So um, which platform, which architecture, which security. But you, as an architect, need to understand how to put them together to, to come up with the actual strategy. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you very much, Charlie. Sure. OK, I think people are happy with that. Um, okay. Thank you very much for the feedback. Um, if you've got any more, please let us know. And thanks very much for coming. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice weekend. And for those in the US, have a um, great Labor Day weekend. Don't spend too much money. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, wait, hang on. People are still saying stuff. I don't want to log off yet. Yeah, I'll do about the mobile app for community users. Yeah, it is. I would say it is linked to the SSO identity exam. Um, in some ways, I did notice some crossovers there. I don't know if you remember that, Charlie. I don't remember what I did yesterday. <laughs>
There was just a, there were a couple of things. It's actually an interesting point, Aldo, because um, a lot of the identity and access management um, exam has some queries in there about how you would um, make it so that a mobile app can be only accessed through um, through the OS features. So things like Touch ID, Face ID, and all of those. Um, so those they, those came up in the identity exam, and then similarly on the mobile exam. I found there were probably about five or six questions that were specifically to do with authentication. And the uh, user agent flows are going to be the one that you need to know the, the most for this exam as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, before, before I forget, when I was studying, I drew up a slide deck with all my study. As I was making sense of it, I, I tried to make some slides so I can present it back to myself. Um, it's all over the place a bit, but it's got a lot of good information in. So if you're thinking about taking the exam, reach out to me and I'm happy to share my study notes. Let me know. Okay, I think we're good, Charlie. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Speak to you guys soon. See you at Dreamforce. See you at Dreamforce. Bye. Bye.